Ladies and gentlemen, let's read gaming to the video. We're going to be discussing news on the new Granite SDK 2.0. Now, this is made by a company known as Graphene, and it is a texture streaming software. It's actually middleware. We'll go into that in just a moment. And as of today, it is of version 2.0. So I know what you're going to say. Well, what does that actually do for games, and what does that do for me? Well, this is covered quite nicely by one of the co-founders of the company and he has stated with the release of the next gen consoles the ps4 the xbox one last month the doors have been opened to a whole new era of video game graphics as the full potential of consoles has yet to be unlocked we provide developers with tools enabling them to bring impressive new experiences to these platforms now this is the cool part the hardware support for virtual texturing the graphics api layer and native Texture native texture atlasing with added to granite in version 2 empowers developers to keep up with said evolution in computer graphics. Now, believe it or not, this software can actually reduce memory usage by 75% and disk file size by 67%. That is huge. That's basically two-thirds, or three-quarters, depending on which one we're going with here, of a difference. And that is a massive. That is, you know, gigantic. And honestly speaking, this is going to be a real benefit to the consoles. Now, it does technically support the PC. And while PC owners may seem a little bit smug right now, with a grin on their face, including myself, the fact of the matter is that even high-end video cards you know, we can't texture as good as they real life. In other words, you know, there's still limits on what we can do. And Basically, the streaming type of software will definitely come into its own with higher polygonal models. So, in other words, the higher the level of detail on the models and the, you know, the world as a whole, the higher the quality, the textures that we need. And obviously, you cannot have a situation where you have several gigabytes of textures just on, say, a wall that's far in the distance. That's just not going to work because you're going to run out of memory very quickly. Especially when you start to take into account disk file sizes. Games are already becoming pretty damn large and one of the main reasons for that, I mean, there's multiple assets, of course, that go into a game, including but not limited to things such as sound and music. Obviously, sound effects are different to the music, but... Of course, the main game's program and someone to actually execute the executables and the DLLs and the various other bits and bobs that actually support that, but also the texture and the graphics assets, um, as well as movie files, that type of thing, can be pretty huge. Um, and that's not really changed. I mean, back in the day, it used to be a thing where games developers would try to use up all the space of, like, a DVD or a CD or whatever pl platform, just to say that, you know, their game stretches a couple of DVDs, so it sounds really impressive, and sometimes they wouldn't even really compress the footage that much, but I digress. The fact of the matter is, with consoles like the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, sure, they do have a lot of memory. Obviously, the Xbox One has the ES RAM issue, and definitely this is going to be a major boon for this system, because, well, you know, it can make use of the... Um, ESRAM a lot better and obviously the Xbox One's frame buffer can actually be rendered in ESRAM and as I said the other day there were problems if it's going to be dealing with say four times uh, MSAA multi-sample anti-aliasing at 1080p then you can start seeing how a lot of memory can be used up but if it's going to be using a lower render quality target or say two times MSAA or a different type of anti-aliasing uh, such as, say, FX or something like that, then it's going to become less of a big deal. Regardless, let's take the render target out for a moment, and even let's focus on the PlayStation 4. Now, the PS4 does have a lot of memory. You know, it has roughly about 5.5 gigs that's available for games, which sounds impressive, but the reality is we're going to start running out of memory pretty quickly. Game assets are huge now, and they're going to become bigger and bigger, especially with open-world environments, and the idea of being able to get closer and closer to an object, and for that level of detail to continuously increase, is only going to be more and more fantastic. 
Now, for those of you who are fam unfamiliar with graphene or the technology in as a whole, you may be more familiar with DirectX's tiled resources. And their actual technology demo was shown as part of Microsoft's build notes way back in June, um, introducing DX's tiled resources. Now, tiled resources is, of course, part of the DX 11.2 feature set as well as um, the Xbox One. They've also stated that the quality, especially if you're going to be using high quality filter modes, is going to be much better. So, for example, full antistropic trilinear filtering, uh, if you're going to be using, say, eight times or so, is going to be a much clearer, much better. And also the shader technology can be reduced. So you can actually reduce the instruction count from around from the current around 30 to 10 to 15. Uh, if you're using, say, texture filtering, which is huge, it's a, it's a lot less uh, instructions for the GPU slash CPU to uh, calculate. And also, this means that memory bandwidth is slightly less of a big deal as well, as the actual texture throughput is improved by about 33%. That's also a big deal, because obviously, when we're dealing with systems which have limited memory bandwidth, I mean, sure, we can argue the PlayStation 4, just for example. Let's use that because we always pick on the Xbox One. I use that in a, in a loving way, but we always pick on the Xbox One. Let's pick on the PS4 for a moment. Sure, 176 sounds like a big deal, but it's really not when you start to consider all of the insane amount of things that are going on with the console, all of the shaders that are being used. And remember, that 176 gigabytes is not... First of all, it's about 172 that's available for games developers, right? When you when you factor in overheads, that type of thing. But even if you say 172, which sounds a good amount, but you've got to take into account, I'm sorry, that that's also going to be used for other things. It's going to be used for things such as the CPU. It's going to be used for compute. It's going to be used for all of these different calculations. And sure, the PS4 does have a very very interesting, very powerful bus setup. That's true. But still, the memory, well, there's only a finite amount of it. So obviously, uh, the PS4's advanced caching is going to definitely be a, a bonus here. But even so, the bottom line is improved throughput and smaller file sizes are definitely going to lead to better things. Fortunately, it still has a full support for older shader emulations for older APIs and hardware. So in other words, it's going to be fully backwards compatible, which is good for older hardware, for legacy development, that type of thing. And obviously, DirectX is about the most popular API right now. Um, OpenGL does also have its own thing. No doubt we'll hear some stuff on Mantle technology and its own version of virtual texturing. No doubt that will be pretty popular, but with DX 11.2, which of course, as I said, is part of Windows 8, um, and Microsoft's Xbox using it, as I said, PlayStation 4 uses it, although that doesn't use um, DX, but still, all of these technologies are going to become much more important. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. There's going to be a lot more on this coming out soon because the developers blogs once again that's graphene software.com um they're stating that there's going to be a lot more detail within the next couple of weeks so definitely you know tune in and i'll keep you guys apprised of that so i'll see you soon take care bye for now